James, when you look at the uh, the guys you have, the options in the slot, what do you like about how they've developed from kind of even spring to now? Yeah, you know, I think obviously uh, we got KJ in there, we got Mac Hippen Hippenhammer in there, we got Lutz in there, and we got Jahan Dotson, and then obviously DeAndre has the ability to go in there as well. He's played a lot. So I think we got really good options. Um, you know, I think you guys know that H is a big part of our, our offense and what, and what we try to do and trying to trying to attack people. Um, so I think we got I think we got really good options. I think those guys are playing with a lot of confidence right now. Um, there's been a pretty good battle. Um, I think Jahan's the guy that kind of you know, probably was the one that we weren't expecting would be this far along. You know, um, so that's that's just created a lot more depth. Um, so I think we're I think we're in a really good position. I think we've had a kind of an excitement about KJ for a while. Um, but to see him kind of put it all together on a consistent basis has been has been really nice. And Lutz has had a really good camp on offense and on special teams. I think there's a lot of confidence right now with our coaches and our players that we could put him in a game and feel really good about it on special teams and on offense. So I think we're in a good, good spot there. What did Ricky Slade do to distinguish himself as a green uh, going into the season, and are there areas that, as a freshman, he still has to maybe step it up a little bit? I think always in pass protection, but he's further along there than we anticipated. Um, the game makes sense to him. He's picked it up faster than what, than we thought. He's probably um, more physically prepared. You guys look at him; he doesn't necessarily look like a, a freshman back. Um, and you know, I think that extra month that he had here in the summer, we're going to try to do more of that. I think that's been that's been good for us. Um, for the guys that can't come at mid-semester, um, but he's fit more physical, uh, physically prepared than I thought, and he's tough. He's a tough guy. He runs like a tough guy. He's really subtle and efficient with his movements. He's not going to do things like Saquon that wow you, but he's gonna he's gonna have these little subtle moves that get people off balance, and then he runs through an arm tackle, lowers his shoulder, you know, and still makes people miss, but it's more subtle. He's just so efficient with his movements. Um, we've been we've been really impressed with him. Plays with a lot of confidence. How would you compare his situation now with Miles a couple of years ago? He kind of got integrated in the offense with special teams as well. Yeah, I think it's probably um, it's probably similar uh, in in some ways. Um, you know, because because he's. Because he's in a situation where you got Miles and you got Jonathan and, and Mark, two seniors who've been around and, and done a lot of football here, and then Journey, who's got a lot of upside um, in terms of raw athletic ability. So I think it's similar in a lot of ways. You know, um, in, in he's he's making an argument for himself. You know, he really is. I, I, I would think by the midpoint of the season, if not earlier. Um, he's got a chance to, to make a move. James, I have a follow-up from 30 hours ago. You said, uh, describing leadership, you used the word different this year. What do you mean by that? How did I say that? I you don't said remember. leadership is different this year. Oh, oh, it's a different on, kind of leadership. On our team. I, yeah. I guess what I'm saying is I just see, instead of it having like a strong senior class where you got a bunch of older guys that have been there and are kind of setting the tone for the whole organization, we have that. But we just don't have um, a lot of numbers. But what I I just see it I see I see more guys comfortable taking an active role in leadership. I, I hear more coaching going on on the field, and it may not be a senior, it may not be a junior, maybe a redshirt sophomore. Guys that have been around that are comfortable enough now to speak up. The locker room. I think you guys you know heard me talk about the locker room. The locker room has been immaculate. Um, I think that discipline off the field is going to show up on the field for us. And, and to be honest with you, these are habits that I want them to take with them in life. So I, I just see it showing up in the weight room, talking to Coach Gall. I hear it in the academic center. I hear it in the locker room. I hear it. Uh, we've changed kind of the, the leadership council model. Um, so I think you guys know, maybe you do, maybe you don't. We have this thing called training on and training off. Have I talked to you guys about that in the past? Probably shouldn't. Um, training on and training off is training on during the season. You don't go out. You don't go to frats. You don't go to bars. You don't. You don't do any of those types of things until we take training off. It's like Saturday after the game. Go out and enjoy yourself. Be a regular student. You know, nothing crazy, but go be a regular student. Be like every other student on campus. But you know, no issues, no problems. 
and we've kind of always controlled that as coaches. We did it, you know, my whole time at Vanderbilt, and then have done it here, um, and all the way back to Maryland, to be honest with you. Um, but we've now handed that over to the players. So the captains and the leadership council are running that. They're deciding when training is on, and they're deciding when training is off. Um, so I think there's just more ownership um, and those guys are doing a really good job of that. And obviously, we're talking about, you know, when we talk about the bars, we're obviously talking about the guys that are above over 21. But even those guys that are over 21, they're not supposed to be doing that stuff in season. You know, it's one of our core values, which is sacrifice. Um, you know, you got to give something up. So um, I, I, I expect that to go to a whole nother level for us because it's one thing when I'm saying it, it's another thing when. 25 guys on the leadership council are saying it and they're enforcing it so i just i see things like that happening i think we all know the best teams are player led and player driven not coaches uh, and i think i think we're really starting to get to that point from a coaching perspective if you look at mike and Deshaun and saquon those guys were better players when they left than when they got here but they set the expectation for what you want around this program how do you coach a younger team to that level when they don't necessarily have the benefit of waiting two or three years to get to where you want them to be? I mean, how do you meet an expectation that took the best guys you've had a few years to find? Well, I actually think the program is set up now to promote that more than in the past. Let's be honest, Mike Kosicki played before he probably should have. So I actually think, you know, guys having to be behind guys and have to grind through that and truly earn their opportunity to play on the field in a competitive atmosphere, um, I think is going to promote that. You know, um, I think Mike, you know, we were thin, we had some injuries, he, he had to play. Um, you know, I think with the competition that we have now pretty much across the board, guys know that, that you're going to have to come in and compete. We talk about during the recruiting process, they see it when they show up here. Um, so I actually think our program is set up to enforce that more than probably in the past um, I do think those guys are pretty good examples though and I think we got a number of them now that like your point I mean obviously you're going to be a better player as a junior or a senior or even a redshirt sophomore I, I think I think Michael Mennett's a really good example I think I've talked about this in the past I mean it's like you know Michael Mennett was so highly recruited as a freshman what about Michael Mennett what about Michael Mennett as a, as a redshirt freshman what about Michael Mennett what well guys you know He's a, he's a redshirt sophomore, and now he's starting for what some people say a top 10 program. You know, that, that's pretty darn good on the offensive line. So I think probably three years ago or four years ago, I don't know if we would have been in position to do that with Michael Mennett. I mean, he may have been forced to play before he was ready. I, you know, I think you guys have heard me say this before. I think when I was at the Green Bay Packers, and we had Brett Favre, and we drafted Aaron Rodgers that, that year, I think one of the best things in Aaron's career was he was able to sit behind Brett for a couple of years and be able to see this is what Brett does really well. Here are things that I would probably do different as the quarterback and, and be able to kind of be ready for that time when it comes. Um, we've all seen quarterbacks get drafted in the first round and they get thrown out there and sometimes they never end up becoming a the player they were supposed to because they were thrown out there too early. So I think our program is a little bit like that. We're going to play freshman. I think we're playing more freshmen this year than we have in a while. Um, but those guys had to come in and, and earn it and compete for it. Hey, James, was there a, a moment with, with Jan Johnson where you felt a comfortable where, hey, you know, he's the guy, I know it for sure. Do you have a moment like that? And what else do you think he needs to do to maybe earn a, a scholarship on the team? Well, to be honest with you, I'm not, I'm not talking about scholarships because that's, that's nobody else's business um, about how we handle those things. That's between us, the players, and their, and their families, not, not to be talking in the media. Um, but, but what I will tell you is we have felt great about Jan Johnson for a long time. Um, we used him as an example the other day in a team meeting. You know, here's Jan Johnson who's on the scout team we travel him to Michigan. We have some injuries. He's on the field playing uh, against Michigan as the fifth team middle linebacker, I think, at the time, and then is on the field playing against Michigan in the big house. Um, there was times the, the following year where the entire week 
he was the scout team tight end because we didn't have somebody that we felt could block well enough in practice to give us the look, and he did that while being a backup linebacker. So I think he's been an example of a guy that whatever you asked him to do, he would do that was in the best interest of the team. He's been unbelievably um, unselfish um, and just continues to get better. You know, And he's been healthy now for a, a good stretch of time. He's done a great job in the offseason in the weight room, so he's earned this opportunity. And all the other things that will come with that, you know, will, will come. Um, but, but once again, there'll be conversations with us and, and Jan and his families, which we've already had conversations about it because the question was asked in the media and we felt like we needed to address it with, with him and his family. You mentioned the discussion about long field goal range versus punt versus going for it. Does Jake, is Jake in that loop on knowing what his limit is going into week one at least so he can anticipate if you're going to call upon him? Yeah, because I, I think that's, that's the other part of this that I think you're getting to is – you know, we also don't want to be in a situation where he thinks his range is one and then we don't put him out there and he doesn't think we have confidence in him to do it. But it's just, we want it to build. We want it to build over time. So we'll have that conversation with him and we'll have that conversation obviously with the quarterbacks um, because I want them to understand in two minute situations and things like that where they have to get to for us to be feel comfortable. Um, but I also think there's a difference between a field goal that we're going to kick throughout the game and what we would put him out obviously for a game winning field goal when we have no other choice where do we have to get to to have a chance to get it through the uprights that's probably around the 55 um, that we think we could do that Vlad's probably around the 57 um, but again back to the point that was originally discussed was the consistency of it thanks coach thanks guys thank you thanks, thanks coach, coach.